Christina says she just has to talk to her mom and try, and Blaze says she will. Christina has to get to a meeting for her foundation. Blaze says she already feels happier with her, and they kiss goodbye. At Maxie's place, Spinelli admits things have changed for him. She asks how so, and he says he believes he's falling back in love with her. Maxie tells him when he figures out what he feels, shoot her an email. Spinelli says he is in love with her, he's always been in love with her. He explains he's been trying to fight these feelings since last Christmas, but living with her, the feelings have begun to overwhelm him. Spinelli asks if he has anything to say in return. Maxie thinks she is in love with him too. Actually, she is almost positive she is. Spinelli is thrilled, but Maxie says love might not be enough. She reminds him love didn't keep them together before, and this is about nostalgia, which she talked about with Sasha. He admits he's talked to Cody, and they both say Sasha and Cody told them to go for it. Spinelli thinks they were meant to be together. Maxie says fate did burst his pipes, so who is she to argue with fate? He admits his pipes are fine, and he moved in to help her. Spinelli tells Maxie that he found out from a little bird she was having trouble, and Maxie realizes it was her mother. She accuses Spinelli of hatching a plan with her mom behind her back as he didn't think she could take care of herself and her kids, and this is not true love. He says everything he did was motivated by his love for her. She yells Peter and Austin would say the same to justify lying to her. Spinelli says his faults are not the same, but she says he still lied to her and moved in with her under false pretenses. She has to be able to fully trust who she gives her heart to. Spinelli only wanted to help her and not see her hurt, and moving in let them experience those old familiar feelings. Maxie argues that old wild Maxie grew up, and he still sees her as the Maxie he has to bail out. Spinelli claims he's gotten to see the new Maxie since moving in. Maxie says he can go tell her mother that she doesn't need help, in fact, she'll tell her herself. Spinelli says he doesn't see her as helpless, he just wants to help make her life better. She says if he wants to help then pack his bags and get out. Spinelli asks where he is supposed to go, and she suggests his own place. Spinelli says he only wanted to help her without her having to feel indebted to him. She says she feels infuriated, and she can solve her own problems. He says he knows that, but she feels he and her mother forgot that. She tells him she'll send his things to him, and he has to go now. She throws him out saying they are over before they even started. When she sees something on the table, she goes after Spinelli to tell him to wait. But he's already gone. At Bobby's, Drew asks Carly how her day's been, and she admits it's not been great. Drew says it's good she kept her day job now that she's left Crimson. Carly admits she may have said things at the office she didn't mean, and Drew says he did too. Drew tells Carly that he knows he's not the man he was before Pentonville, and he'll never be that man again. Drew doesn't have a firm grasp on the old Drew or the man he is now. Carly says Drew Kane is funny, kind and sweet, and the man she fell for. She loves him and Scout adores him, and he risked everything to save Willow, plus, he went to prison for her. Drew senses a but coming. Carly loves him, but she wants him to put Pentonville and the past behind him. Drew is struggling to do that and also with what Nina did to him. Carly says he can hate Nina, but he has let go. Drew wonders if she has because she took that magazine from Nina and enjoyed it. Carly admits she did enjoy it, but she took the job to make Crimson better, but he just couldn't stop looking for ways to make men a pay. She knows the real Drew Kane is still in him, and he needs to see it, or else Nina wins. Carly tells him that he survived Pentonville, and now he's free. Drew says he still feels so far away from everyone he loves. Carly argues that prison is one inside his head, and he has to choose to let it go. Drew knows he should be satisfied Nina lost Sunny, and that he took Crimson from her. But then, Nina landed on her feet at the invader. He doesn't understand how Carly makes this easy and turns the other cheek. She cries none of this is easy. She says she is done letting Nina rule her life, and losing her mom has made her realize life is short, and she won't waste one moment of time on Nina. She says she'll never forgive or believe anything Nina says, but Nina is her own worst enemy. She tells Drew as long as they are together it's all that matters. He likes the sound of that, and they take each other's hands. He asks how they make up. She has an idea, but they can't do it here. At Ava's gallery, Carly and Drew Sunny tells home Nina home. that she has the floor, so say what she needs to say. Nana has heard from Ava about what happened in Puerto Rico and asks what's happened to Dex and why he's not protecting him. Sunny tells her that isn't her concern, 
and as she can see, he's fine. She yells just because he served her with divorce papers doesn't mean she won't stop loving him. She then notices he's not wearing his wedding ring. He says that ring is a symbol of love, fidelity, and truth, and now that's gone. Nana says it's gone when they decide, and she hasn't taken hers off. He calls that her choice, it won't change anything when they sign the papers. Nina says the only thing that matters is she loves him, and she knows he still loves her. Sonny says that isn't the only thing that matters. Nina knows he understands why she turned Carly and drew in as they both live by the rule do unto others before they can do unto you. Sonny yells for him it applies to business, but for her it was jealousy, and she only wanted to see Carly miserable. Nina says he blames her for taking Drew from Carly, but he never blames Carly for taking her daughters from her. Sonny calls her reckless and petty and that's unforgivable. Nina says she's been called worse, and she never claimed to be a saint. She says he's convinced she's motivated by jealousy and hate, but she's motivated by love their love. She says he never felt the kind of love he has with her with anyone before, and she's never had this kind of love either. Despite everything that's happened, she dares Sonny to tell her that he doesn't still love her. Sonny says of course he loves her, but she lied to him. Nina admits she made mistakes, but Nixon Falls brought them together and helped them find love, and they can make something out of her latest mistake too, and learn from it. She says they can fix this if they are together. Nina thinks they can find that love from Nixon Falls again, they can be Mr. and Mrs. Sonny Corinthos again. He murmurs, Mr. and Mrs. Sonny Corinthos. She asks if he forgives her. Sonny believes in forgiveness as he's asked for it a lot lately. He can forgive her, but he can never forget. He told himself what happened in Nixon Falls was because she was in love with him, but this time she deliberately set out to punish Carly, and Drew was collateral damage. He says she lashed out without caring about the consequences and now she has to deal with them. He walks out and she cries he may be willing to walk out on their marriage, but she never will. In her room at the Metro Court, Blaze tells her mother that Christina is more than her friend, she's her girlfriend. Blaze asks if her mother heard her, and Natalia says she did. Natalie begins cleaning the place up and says she needs to be picking up after herself and says clearly a mother's work is never done. Blaze tells her mother to stop and look at her. She says there are millions of reasons she didn't tell her the truth before, but now that there is a reason to. Blaze says, Christina and I. Natalia pets her off and says, there is no Christina and you? She says this is not her daughter, but Blaze says she doesn't know her and she's not the child she remembers. Blaze argues she's been fending for herself in a tough industry for years, and she knows who she is and now she needs to know it too. Christina decides to go, but Blaze tells her to stay. Blaze tells her mother she needs to learn to accept. Natalia cuts her off again and says she supported her wanting this career and managed her money. Blaze says she doesn't manage her career, and Natalia knows that's Brooke Lynn. She criticizes Brooke Lynn for not pushing her to put out a new song already and thinks Christina has been distracting her. Blaze says the song is not what they are talking about, and Christina has inspired her more than anything and anyone lately. Natalia refuses to talk about this anymore and walks out. Christina supports Blaze and says it seems like she and her mom have been in this place before. Blaze says she's tried to talk to her in the past, but she refuses to hear it. And you'd think finding a woman in her bed would make it clear. Blaze says her mom has friends and colleagues who are gay and has no problem with them. Christina notes they aren't her daughter. Blaze says she's tried to make her family proud, but now her mom won't look at her even though she's the same person she's always been. Christina says she and her mother got to a better place and in time Blaze and her mom will too. Blaze isn't holding her breath and she shouldn't have to ask Christina to come along for her coming out ride. Christina wonders if she regrets telling her mom that she's her girlfriend. Blaze doesn't regret it, and for the first time, she finally feels free. Christina says they've been honest with each other so far, and they have to keep doing that. Blaze fears her mother will never come around given their history.